Welcome to my latest YouTube video. My name is Ross Rosenberg. I am the author of the Human Magnet Syndrome and the creator of the Codependency Cure. Today, I'm going to go over essential elements of my observe, don't absorb technique. First, let me clarify, and I say this because at any given time, if you Google observe, don't absorb, or put it in a search engine on YouTube, you will find a plethora of videos using that term and not referencing the material to me. And you should know that this concept was created out of necessity, out of pain, suffering, when I was in a relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder. And it began its development 27 years ago and keeps moving forward. The concept itself is not going to be covered in this video, but I just wanted to remind my viewers that there are other primary concepts within which the observe, don't absorb technique fits in, or secondary or tertiary concepts that fit into observe, don't absorb. It is a part of my stage in my treatment program, my 11th stage treatment program, that focuses on preparing to set boundaries with a pathological narcissist. And this would be stage five. And it cannot be accomplished if you do not understand the observe, don't absorb technique and all of its related concepts. I am grateful and quite happy to hear that people use observe, don't absorb all the time. And I received emails, letters, comments, thousands of them that are grateful for it. And I couldn't be happier. But ODA, observe, don't absorb, is part of a defensive program to protect a self-love deficient person, a codependent, SLD, while they are escaping a narcissistically abusive relationship. ODA cannot be used by itself as much as the other secondary concepts. So let me first start with a brief introduction of observe, don't absorb. It all starts with this idea that I, I got from George Bernard Shaw, a saying that changed my world. Don't wrestle with pigs. You'll get dirty if aside, the pig likes it. It was a watershed moment when I came across that saying, because in that moment of my life, I needed a way to understand that every single time I got angry, every single time I became resentful, every single time I wanted to defend myself, stand up for myself, or you know, take vengeance upon someone who's abusive, it always made things worse. Always. And I realized that the narcissists have control when I want to fight them because that is where they are really good and I suck. Because, you know, I'm kind of hampered by my morals, <laughs> my ethics, and my empathy. And I just don't hurt people to hurt people. But when you do not have empathy or your empathy has been neutralized by your anger and rage, such as a pathological narcissist who has a narcissistic injury, they can clobber you and hurt you and not bat an eye. So the idea of fighting someone who not only believes they are stronger and more talented or more sophisticated in fighting or you can look at it, someone who wants to fight, who understands that their strength and their abilities to dominate require the person to want to fight. Because it's within that fight, this individual realizes that they can't win. One, two, three. And they never win. And the losing humiliates them. It feeds into this self-fulfilling prophecy that there's nothing you or that person can do to get this narcissist to love her or him. 
and deepens their shame and ultimately breaks down their resolve to leave the relationship. So the act of getting angry and fighting in itself is a trap. Now, this is different from a discussion where someone is trying to hurt you, and if you don't protect yourself, you will get hurt. This is only connected to a narcissist and a SLD, a codependent, in a relationship. When the SLD wants to set a boundary, wants to hold the narcissist accountable, or wants to try to break free from the narcissist who is abusing them. Their best weapon never, never, never was to be stronger and more sophisticated in their offensive strategy. It always has been to stay out of the fight because that in itself makes you believe you can do things that are impossible that you really don't have any history to support that belief, but ultimately works out that you are worse than you were in the beginning. If my boss was a karate master and all of her power came from getting people to want to fight her so that she can knock the heck out of them, but outside her little karate studio, she was weak, afraid, and really insecure. So all of her bravado, all of her strength, all of her destructive capabilities require a person to want to fight her in a place where she almost always wins using the type of fight that the other person can never win. How does a karate master narcissist who could only win in a karate fight, how does he or she overcome any desire from their partner, they have to get them to want to fight. They have to get them to, to want to be angry. They have to get them to feel righteous. They have to get them to believe that if they get angry enough, they can kick their butt. They can beat them. Because when people get that angry, they're not rational. So the concept that I want to talk about today is called false power syndrome. False power syndrome. False power syndrome explains why people who get mad, people who are enticed to fight back, people who are triggered, people who are purposely manipulated to get to want revenge, always lose the fight. And, you know, the best explanation I have, and of course, this is reflective of my age, is Muhammad Ali. You know, in his early 30s, mid 30s, he wasn't the strongest and fastest anymore. The people that wanted to beat him or the people he needed to beat were stronger, younger. And he had to figure out a way to win. And what he did was he antagonized his opponents. He berated them. He wanted them to get so filled with rage and hatred that they would come into that ring and the first three or four rounds just pound the heck out of them. And he figured out that if he could just get under their skin and kind of just hunker down in what he called his rope-a-dope and just let the guy punch him and, and kind of mitigate any potential harm by some of his his defensive moves that after three or four rounds that person retired i think that you win a lot of your fights as well as in the ring outside the ring as well you psych people out don't you beforehand you don't really psych them out you really make them fight harder and that's the thing it makes them fight too hard it makes them anxious they got to get you like i told george i said okay sucker i'm backing up in the ropes and i want you to take your best shots and i just stood there come on show me something show me something kid you're not doing nothing you're just a girl look at you you ain't got nothing come on sucker show me something i talked him to death and i made him so angry he just beat himself out that was a man to beat him and talk to him now maybe this could be the tactic of ali to let the man punch himself out 30 seconds left in round eight and he blows now he's bouncing better almost falls out of the ring right hand another sneaky right hand this time he works over the shoulder of Foreman.
So if we use that as an example of how a pathological narcissist entices someone to, going back to George Bernard Shaw, they're going to have to get you mad. They're going to have to find a trigger point. Now, if you're an SLD and you have a pathological narcissist lover, husband, partner, uh, business partner, and that person is abusive, harmful, neglectful, there's many forms of narcissistic abuse. The worst news for them is for you to leave the relationship, to believe that fighting them is more of the problem than the solution, because that's how they always get you. And that is why I came up with the term active codependency. Active codependents are always trying to control the narcissist to either love them or not hurt them or be what they used to be that was only short-lived. So these narcissists perpetuate narcissistic abuse because you stay in the relationship. If you're not an SLD, you're not attracted to narcissists, according to the human magnet syndrome. Or if you're an SLD and you're getting healthier, you no longer feel attracted and you no longer want to try to solve a problem because you're in therapy with me and you know that the act of trying to solve a problem with a pathological narcissist is a form of getting into the wrestling ring. So what are they going to do as you get healthier, as you get stronger, as you realize that this wrestling business gets you dirty and you know what? You're tired of cleaning all your clothes. The only way that you're going to escape the narcissist is to shut down emotionally, effectively, which is not absorb their antagonism to want to fight them. So observe is to watch the narcissist. Watch him or her try to antagonize you to press your buttons and watch them do whatever they can in order to get you to be angry, which is absorb. Observe the narcissist and his or her tricks. Detach or in a healthy way disassociate from what is happening and do whatever you can to not let them get into your head, your heart. That is where not absorbing is important. And if you understand this concept, false power syndrome, it actually is a part of the human evolution. It goes back, I suspect, to almost all primates or highly developed or specialized mammals that they learned in the wild to survive. You had to get mad when you feel threatened and want to fight. And that probably had its place in time. But when a person namely a pathological narcissist, wants to keep another person from leaving the relationship or breaking free, they have to disable any sense of power and control. The best approach is to make them want to fight and have them lose, feel humiliated, feel beaten down, and eventually give up. So what happens if you spend 10 years in a relationship, 20, and every time you get angry, which is provoked often through what I have explained in other videos as induced conversation and other methods of provocation, and you get provoked and you fight, in that moment, you are like ready to stand up for yourself and you're going to call the police, the friends or whomever. And at the end of this fight, you are terribly beaten up emotionally or physically. You start to give up. The fight makes it worse. So to escape a narcissistically abusive relationship, you have to embrace the primary power and control mechanism of the pathological narcissist. That is to vanquish any potential attempts to defend yourself, to give up. Now, those individuals are called passive SLDs or passive codependents. They just give up. They just come up with some rationalization or their fight was beaten out of them. So it's almost a zero probability that they're going to get out of the relationship. But most SLDs are active. Active SLDs believe they can control, believe they can win over, believe they can change, believe that they can become the type of person that can make the narcissist want to love them. If you are this active SLD 
and you're trying to escape or defend yourself in a way that you're preventing future harm, you are going to want to stand up for yourself, find a way to be as strong or as smart as a narcissist, and deliver the same type of punishment. Well, that is what the narcissist wants. The pig who, want, who likes to get dirty is going to do whatever he or she can to get you into the wrestling ring where you guys are going to roll around in the slop and the pig is going to be at home and you are going to be mad, angry, and ultimately defeated. So you have to control false power syndrome. The goal is to recognize it before so it doesn't happen. To recognize that when you get angry, whether it's provoked because the narcissist is manipulative and knows what he or she's doing, which is why I use the Muhammad Ali example, when you get provoked, you immediately recognize that to get angry is to make you weaker. So you go right into the observe, don't absorb technique. You literally watch the narcissist try to get you angry so that you can fight or defend yourself so that they can ultimately overpower you. You observe and you do in this very healthy way, you disassociate. It's almost as if you are going to leave your body and you are watching from afar the narcissist trying to push buttons and pull triggers and, and, and do whatever they can to get you angry. But what happens if you not only have mastery of observe, don't absorb, you have mastery of false power syndrome, and you realize that your only way out is to go numb, disassociate, just as long as you can get out of the relationship. Because disassociation is unhealthy in its extreme form. It's a psychological mental health disorder. In this moment, you've created yourself to not be emotional because you know that if you should be emotional, you're going to be hurt. So you are watching the narcissist try to induce you into a conversation, induce you into a fight, trying to get you angry. And all of a sudden, it becomes almost humorous. And I promise, once you get a handle on this false power syndrome and you execute observe, don't absorb the way that it was meant to be done, you have so much power. And I can tell you so many examples in my own life that it became funny. A person that normally would antagonize me, and you know, I think of one person who's uh, I believe is anti-Semitic. Of course, I'm Jewish, and he would just say subtle comments because he was a smart person. He knew that anything really direct would make him look bad. And if I reacted, I then would be within his comfort zone to press more buttons and eventually make me blow up, want to fight. Not physically, because I don't do that, but emotionally or verbally, and then I would get my butt kicked. And so when I'm around this person and they should get mad at me for whatever reason, well, they're a narcissist, I could see it in their face and their eyes that they want to get me to wrestle with them. They're going to try to get me mad. And when it happens, it's pathetic. I look at someone and I go, of course. Actually, I have a video on that, the of course method. And I go, of course you're doing this. Of course he's saying this. Of course he's trying to get me mad. And I feel so strong in my observing mode because I'm not absorbing. So to wrap up, the observe, don't absorb technique and all of the associated techniques that go with it, including false power syndrome, is discussed in detail in my six-hour seminar called Escaping the Narcissistic Storm. And it's also discussed in my latest video, The Codependency Cure, Tips, Tools, and Strategies. So you can do this. Don't fight. The fight is your enemy. Smile. Watch someone try to get you upset. Walk away either physically or emotionally, and you got it. You've weakened them. you disable them. Okay. Well, thank you for coming to my uh, YouTube channel and watching another video. And should you want more information, please um, follow us, click that, you know, whatever they say at the end of the videos, the bell, the button or whatever, subscribe and send us emails at help at self love recovery.com and, um, and make comments because people are going to want to hear your stories. Okay. 
Take care and be well. Bye-bye.